reassembly of the vertical head wasn't quite as simple as I had anticipated. Backlash now is 10 thou. So that's interesting. So preload does make a difference. Welcome back to Workshop Friend as I continue to renovate this Adcock and Shipley mill and in particular the vertical head. So in this video I hope to get the head reassembled and uh, that will show whether my calculations on the gear mesh have been successful. Um, I'll also be painting it and uh, refitting all the components, cleaning them up and just generally getting it ready for reassembly. So I've repainted the body. This is Adcock and Shipley cement grey which is slightly a slightly different shade from the original uh, and um, don't know why that is whether the Adcock and Shipley cement gray is a later color and mine being an earlier machine had a different kind of gray anyway I went ahead and painted it I also painted the badge and the cover uh, I don't claim this to be expert painting so I think we're ready to reassemble this I'm just going to double check everything's clean inside and then we'll start reassembling the spindle and hopefully get it all back together. So I've cleaned up the um, nuts for holding the vertical head in position and uh, I just filed them and uh, put them back in the lathe, refaced them and re-chamfered them. I didn't think it was worth remaking these. I hope that um, I can get away with this sort of refurbishment. Um, what I'm going to do now is chemically blacken them and the same with the screws that hold the hold the uh, nameplate on. So I've just cleaned them up and uh, they just need to be re-blackened. So I washed both the bearings in solvent um, several times and um, this is the lower one uh, which seems to be quite consistent no matter how I rotate it it sounds more or less the same it probably is a little bit noisy because I've got only very thin oil on there um, this one is the upper bearing interestingly this is um, metric and this is imperial so this is uh, three and a half inches by one and uh, one and five eighths bore. Now this one, uh, when I washed it, I noticed some very small flakes came out in the solvent, uh, settled in the bottom. So after several rinses and applying lubricant, um, this is how it sounds. Um, now, if you get the the balls to rotate in a certain plane, it does sometimes pick up roughness there. So I think this bearing, yeah, here it is, there, there. So I came to the conclusion this bearing should be replaced. I probably could have put it back, but I thought with all the effort I'm going to to reassemble it, I may as well change that bearing now. And I'd like to commend Carl Wilson, who, um, having seen one of my earlier videos, um, noticed that there was some noise coming from this uh, the top part of the vertical head and I suspect it was this bearing. So I've got a replacement, a reasonable quality replacement for the upper bearing. Just arrived this morning in fact. So we'll be fitting that in place of, in place of that. This fits inside this collar and uh, when I dis disassembled it uh, I discovered there was bits of swarf that had got inside there and welded themselves to the outside of this. So earlier on I, I very carefully um, stoned those off and I'm just uh, giving these a touch up again just to make sure there's nothing on here at all which um, could cause problems. Also there was a, a slight ding on the inside here on the uh, International 40 taper and so I've taken this opportunity while it's uh, accessible to get in there and just stone that out. So uh, there was one one mark but this is really hard actually. I think I've removed that 
nice and clean now ready for ready for assembly it's time to start reassembly of the spindle the inner washer here rotates with the shaft and locates on the inner race of the bearing the outer washer is stationary and transfers preload onto the outer race these two washers combine to form a close fitting seal to prevent dirt and swarf from reaching the bearing so I'm just carefully removing uh, burrs from the key so that uh, when we come to reassemble we don't have any problems It's not always good to have too close a fit. You'll see in a little while that this was going to cause a problem with assembly. I don't really like to use a hammer, even with a block of wood, to seat a bearing, but this is just to start the seating process. You'll see later that the, when the flange is fitted, it seats the bearing into its final position. So you can see the o-ring which I fitted to stop uh, one of the oil leaks. This ring is actually partially a dust cover which is a close fit over the spindle but also to provide end load onto the lower bearing. Okay, I've had to dismantle everything and the problem was that when I was trying to get this in position and then I noticed that again the key had indented this and put a burr in there and since I've gone to such trouble to make this parallel and to give me the right dimensions for the seating of the bevel gear I felt I needed to take it all apart and in taking it apart I find it very difficult to twist this ring to line up the keyway to push the shaft through and that was because the burr on the inside there had um, upset the internal dimension there I've taken it off and um, I've just opened this hole up to more of a clearance and when I look at the original that was quite sloppy on here and, and the reason for that I think is so that you can get your fingers in there and rotate it. So I've done that, opened it up, cleaned it up again. This also gave me the opportunity to fill the bearing with grease which I forgot to do last time so now it's time to reassemble. Okay despite my intentions that a detailed assembly drawing would enable me to assemble this once only I've actually assembled and disassembled this twice already. On uh, the second trial assembly the problem I faced was that with the bearing um, sandwiched in here between the nut and the gear uh, with the spinner on top of the spacer and uh, fully tightening the nut uh, in this rather unsatisfactory way of just uh, tapping this around here with a block of wood I discovered that uh, when this is fully tightened I could still twist this with my fingers so that indicated to me that there was something um, stopping this from clamping. I couldn't see anything there was, that was causing a problem. When I reassembled it with the old bearing, um, I was able to clamp this securely. So it seems to me that the new bearing has a slightly different fit on here and uh, the clamping force is just, just isn't sufficient uh, with the previous method of tightening this up. And I made this uh, pin spanner. So add us some scrap so we can uh, put this on here 
and hopefully with this we can get sufficient torque to clamp this assembly down. So this is the old bearing, uh, this is the new one. I don't have a telescopic uh, gauge for or a bore gauge so I'm just having to use these calipers but even with these I can tell there is a very slight difference in the internal diameter which really surprises me <laughs> I wasn't expecting that uh, so this original bearing um, fits on and when I clamp it up with the nut the whole assembly is tight and this one seems to require more clamping uh, I would say I would say that is just ever so slightly smaller I don't know why that is and as I say that really surprises me now however that does indicate to me that with uh, higher clamping force in other words a bit more torque on that nut uh, we should be able to bring that bearing into contact with the gear and uh, compress the whole assembly properly so this is now the third time that I've installed the spindle I'm just using this rag to prevent uh, stray bits of uh, sawdust from getting in the bearing. Do my best to keep it as clean as possible. Again, I had to start uh, the seating by using a hammer um, uh, until there was sufficient uh, depth of engagement to use the screws and the nut to seat everything home. I think you can see there's quite a lot of torque on that nut to remove all the clearances and tighten everything up. I found I had to remove this cap to complete the tightening process. Okay, I think you can see that uh, the pin spanner was uh, successful in tightening that up. It came to a definite halt when we uh, when the stack was compressed. Now I put uh, the rotating part of the head on the base, and uh, so we can see the mesh of the gears. And um, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if that sounds uh, noisier than it was before. Of course, there's no oil in there at the moment. The um, the outer edge of the gear and the inner edge line up so um, that's what I was expecting so assuming this gear is uh, the correct distance from the center line that one is two so the other thing we can do is measure the backlash by putting the clock on the outer rim of the bevel gear one of the bevel gears and then restraining the other Okay, that's showing that's showing 23 thou a backlash now I don't know what to expect um, but that's what we've got um, I might have a look uh, later at some data and see if that's uh, a reasonable figure so uh, I tried it another position and that was also 23 thou so it's consistent I think what I'm going to do now is put the the bearing cap on here um, put some preload on the on the two angular contact bearings and I do that by by screwing this on ok 
Okay, before we go any further, we need to lock the lock the nut on there. So this uh, this actually provides end load to the to the top angular contact bearing. So in doing that, basically putting preload on both bearings and the whole assembly will be slightly moved, moved slightly downwards. Actually that's a good point. I should perhaps uh, test the backlash once the preload is on. Now that's interesting, with the preload applied, there has been some movement there. Backlash now is 10 thou, perhaps tw no, 12, between 10 and 12 thou. So that's interesting. So preload does make a difference and it's uh, reduced the backload, backlash. And I would say that's quieter too. Well, that's interesting. Most of the theoretical protection is very, very quickly. Well, thank you. Gareth Davies. I think you should put yourself in that position. Maybe I'm quite happy. Okay, Gareth Davies, if you want to tune in to the attacks on Israel on October the 7th, you can do the voice. With the two parts of the vertical head assembled, it's actually quite heavy, and I really must find a better way of um, supporting this on the table as I bolt it onto the face of the mill. Well, here's the, the head on. Um, the color is quite different from the original color. Um, I'm still in two minds as to what to do about that, whether to try and match this color and uh, give this another coat, or whether to gradually paint the whole machine this new color. I don't know. I'm going to think about that. Um, it's time to put the oil in and um, the oil specifications on the cover here. Um, the modern equivalent is this, ISO 68. Um, so when I did my calculations, uh, when I was making the GA, I, I worked out that we need 150 uh, milliliters. So we'll see how accurate that estimation was. And uh, so we'll start with 150. We'll also find out whether the gasket sealing has been successful. Well, that's not bad. <laughs> no cheating, I promise. So uh, yeah, my calculation uh, of 150 milliliters is uh, is bang on. So um, the reason I had to do that is because I don't have a manual. And uh, so a lot of what I've done um, with this has been based on trial and error and <clears throat> just learning from the GA and uh, just some guesswork. OK, there are actually two gearboxes. There's one um, here, which um, is a pair of gears that uh, brings the drive up from um, the lower level to the higher level. So I've uh, replenished the oil in there. We've already done this one. So let's give this a run and see how it sounds. This is on the high speed range.
Well, that's this phase of the project uh, completed. You won't be hearing any more from me on the vertical head, I don't think. Uh, I'm going to keep an eye on the preload on the bearings. I've set them as I think uh, they should be, but uh, that's something probably to keep an eye on uh, for the first uh, few hours of use. Um, next part of the project is probably going to be the horizontal milling arbor, for which I have uh, material for the bar and also the casting for the support bracket on the end. So that needs a bit of planning. I'm going to be thinking about that before the next video. Thanks for joining me and thank you for your comments. Do keep them coming and any ideas or suggestions.